In this video, you guys are gonna learn about how to create lag in the downswing and what it should feel like. Now, most people focus too much on their arm and wrist when they're trying to create lag, but my way is a little bit different and I like to create lag by making sure that the sequence or how I initiate my downswing is correct. So if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel because it really helps me create more videos like this for you guys. And also, if you wanna send in swings to me, you can do so on my profile on the Skillist app. I will leave the link to that in the description box below. When you send in your swings to me, I can kind of analyze it and I can give you more specific drills based on your specific issues. Okay, so what is lag? So when people think of lag, they think about in the downswing, they're creating like a sharper angle between their lead arm and the golf club, okay? And that's said to kind of produce a lot more power, which it can. Now, you have to be careful on how you're creating lag. So I did create a video in the past. You should have checked that out. I'll try to leave the link in the description box for you guys to view that because if you do it incorrectly, you may change kind of how open or close the face is, depending on what you're doing with your wrist, things like that. And it may actually make your swing worse if you do it that way, okay? So be sure to watch that video uh, just to avoid all those mistakes. When people try to create lag, the mistake is that they, they go to the top of their backswing and they basically just try to pull, okay? So they're intentionally trying to like really sharpen the angle without kind of turning their body and things like that. But when they do that, they kind of get themselves out of sequence. And when they try to do it, make it too sharp, they actually add a lot of cupping into their wrist, which opens up the club face, and they have a lot of work to kind of dump out the angles in time. The way that I like to do it, or, or get people to feel how to create lag, is through the proper sequencing, or the timing on how they're moving their body to initiate the downswing. For example, the mistake is they get to the very top of the backswing and then they pull the arms and then they try to dump the angles out. Whereas what I try to do is I, I have my, my wrists actually fairly relaxed, but when I take it back, you can kind of see as I'm initiating my downswing, the club is still moving back into the backswing. So that's kind of more of a sequence thing than anything. I'm not really thinking about like pulling or moving the handle down or my hands down towards my heels, stuff like that. I'm not thinking about that at all. You can kind of see, just if I, if I do this, make it small, you can kind of see as my body's turning in the opposite direction, the club is still moving back, right? And by doing that correctly, letting your wrist kind of relax, it kind of happens almost without you thinking about it too much. If your body is going in the opposite direction and you're letting your wrist relax, the weight of the club is gonna to continue to swing back. So you're automatically gonna sharpen the angles a little bit. So I'll give you some examples, but there's a very simple exercise that I think is really great to feel out how to do the lag correctly or what it should feel like in your wrists. What you'd wanna do is you wanna grip the, grip the club like normal. I'll, I'll show you from the side, but you wanna place your wrist kind of in a neutral position. So you don't wanna start off with any angles in the wrist. So you're starting off with neutral wrists and you can see that the shaft is like straight up and down. Okay, it's not like this or it's not in towards you. It's very straight up and down. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna bring the handle down with, while, keep, while still keeping the shaft straight up and down. And you'll feel that after a certain point, there's a limit on how much you can do. Because of the way that your, your wrist is kinda, the bones in the wrist here, you're not gonna create like an extremely sharp angle like this. You can see that after a certain point, my hands will have to come off of it because my, my wrists don't have enough range of motion. So when it's straight up and down like this, all I'm doing is I'm bringing the handle down and I'm feeling like my wrists are just hinging. Okay, that's a good exercise. So right here, when, once you feel a limit to where you, your hands can still stay on it, that's, that's enough already. Okay, most people think you have to like really create this insanely sharp angle and maybe some players can do that because they're just really hypermobile on their wrists. People just, just have different amounts of flexibility in, 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 um, in how much they can hinge their wrists. But typically, it won't hinge very, very much, okay? So this is a good way to sense what that loading in, that, in, the, hin or in the wrist should feel like. And it doesn't happen so excessively, but this is a great exercise. So I feel like, like it happens a little bit, but not a crazy amount like this. That's a good way to feel that out. Once you have that, that feeling, 
Now the next thing is to, when you go back, I want you to feel like you're starting the downswing or you're moving your body in the opposite direction while allowing the club to go back in the backswing. So if I just did this with my trail arm, I go back and I turn. You can see as I'm turning in the opposite direction, the club head is still going up, okay? If I just go back and forth, my wrist is really relaxed. I'm not really having to do anything. But you can see just how much of an angle that I can create just by having the right sequence or just initiating my turns in the opposite direction a bit earlier. Most people all think that you have to get to the very top and then you create lag. But that, does, that makes it feel a little bit more mechanical and doesn't make it really smooth. You can see that when I'm doing it, I'm, I'm kind of constantly in motion and I'm starting my downswing much sooner and much faster with my body while the club is still continuing into the backswing. If you want to learn more about kind of the sequencing of the body in the downswing, I, I also created a video about that so you can watch that. I'll also probably leave that in the, in the description box for you to view. But sequence is so important. It allows you to do so many things without you really having to think about it too much. You shouldn't have to think about lag like so separately like this, okay, in the downswing and then dumping it. Because then remember, your, your, your body has to be continuously moving. Otherwise, you're, you're, if you start doing this, you're gonna make other things out of sequence and then you're gonna sacrifice power and it's, not, it's just not gonna be good. So the way I like to do it is through constant motion and making sure that the player's sequence is in order. With these examples on the screen, the, the difference that I, I want you to see between the wrong and the correct is that when I do it wrong, I'm only focusing on like my wrist at the top and I'm almost forgetting my, the rest of my body. Okay, you kind of almost like I, I stall my body and just focus on creating that, the sharp angles here before I go. And that's causing everything actually to move together, which, which throws your sequencing out of place. When I was doing it correct, my body was constantly kind of in motion. So you can see my, as I turn back, and then I immediately turn in the opposite direction, but the club is almost continuing on into the backswing. And the only way I'm gonna be doing that is if my, my wrists are quite relaxed, okay? A lot of people are really tense and feel a lot of tension in the wrist because they're physically trying to create a lot of lag themselves in the wrist here, but mine is like totally relaxed. And that's the difference, okay? Then you can kind of see as I, right up here, kind of see as I'm going the opposite direction, my my arm, I'm letting my wrist kind of relax, the weight of the club still going back. Um, whereas the other time I go here and I'm just trying to physically pull my handle down like this before I, I, I release. Okay, that's gonna be harsh on the wrist and you're gonna create more tension than you need. When you do this, I also want you to just take note of your trail arm, okay? It should be quite soft, right? You wanna allow it to, to feel like it bends, okay? You don't wanna keep this really stiff. If you keep this really stiff, again, it's gonna put even more tension in that wrist, okay? But you can kind of see, if I just do it with my trail arm, when I go back, you can see that the, as the club goes back, my right arm is it's pretty soft and it's still bending, okay? I don't want it to be stiff the whole time. And I'm, trying, I'm not trying to create lag here with my right arm stiff. When you're going in the opposite direction and the club is still going back or feeling like it's still continuing back a little bit, that softness in the wrist and that softness in that trail arm allowing it to bend will help to create that lag instead of you physically feeling like you have to pull it down or create more angles here. And that's the big difference and it's all, all sequencing. What you can focus on is just kind of going back and forth. You can see when I go back and forth, back, Right, my body is like turning and the clubs are going up. You wanna feel that before it comes down. And you'll have to be really relaxed in your wrist. So if you feel that, it, should, it shouldn't feel very physically harsh at all. So if I go ahead and hit one just with my right arm, I turn, right, I can easily create that lag coming down and then just let the club fall 
on the golf ball. And then you can do that with two hands, right? Practice swings. But I'm allowing my right arm to bend so that the club can continue on back. Once I have that feel, I just let it drop on top. But you can see how that automatically creates lag with, with no tension there. So if you are always thinking about it in your mind, you're probably doing it incorrect, okay? So focus on that sequence instead. You should have very little tension, should be relaxed in your trail wrist, should be relaxed in your trail arm as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Now, if you have any questions about anything that I've talked about, please leave a comment down below. And just like always, please subscribe to the channel because it really helps me to create more videos like this for you guys. See you next time.